Hi everybody, it's me Alicia here with Crafting with Creepsakes. I am so excited to share this game-changing technique that I've used since I've started making keychains and badge wheels. I really hope that this helps everybody out. Um, you guys are not gonna believe what it is that I use. Everyone thinks that I've had this secret as to making my keychains, and I'm so excited to share it with you. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, the secret that I use is, you guessed it, spray paint. Um, it helps with creating the illusion of uh, that there's a lot of glitter. Um, for those who make tumblers, you understand what I'm talking about. It's a it's a technique that tumbler makers use, and I've just applied it to the keychain badge wheel world, and it's helped tremendously with um, material and um, not having to worry about uh, an inset all the time. So it's it, let me just go ahead and get started. So I am working with a Zindi three inch circle keychain acrylic, and it comes with brown film. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my weeding tool here, and I'm just going to peel it off. You don't have to press any of this. You can, if you want, you can wipe with alcohol. I usually don't. The only time I ever wipe my acrylics with alcohol is if I'm just using straight up acrylic, or I'm sorry, um, vinyl and no spray paint. You don't have to sand it or prep it or anything. So pretty much, you're just gonna take your spray paint, shake it up really, really well. I just spray off to the side and make sure it's not clogged and that the spray paint is flowing through the can, or the nozzle, I should say. Okay. And you're just gonna do some light coats. You don't wanna do, you don't wanna go too heavy on it. Give it a good distance. Make sure you're hitting it from different angles so you're getting the edges around the acrylic. Okay. You wanna give it a good couple of coats because if you don't, it will have this transparency look when you take the other side of the brown paper off. Now I am going to use the fire technique and pretty much what that is is you can use spray paint. I just use this here and a lighter and what the fire technique is is it kind of helps set the acrylic or I'm sorry it helps set the spray paint onto the acrylic and it also helps it dry faster in between colors. So if there's multiple colors that I'm using I am um, I do do this fire technique between each colors. So pretty much you just get your lighter. Please be careful while doing this, you guys. I've been working with spray paint for a couple of years now, so it's just something that I know how to work with. You don't have to do this. This just is something that I prefer to do. And pretty much you just create a flame. Oops. That's it. Really quick, do not keep the flame on there long. You don't need much. That's it. And then you're just gonna go ahead and let this dry. Please be careful when doing that. Again, you don't have to do it. This is just something that I do. And then once it's dry, we have something like this. You have your base now to work on. Okay, and then we'll go ahead. I'm gonna go get set up for the next step. I'll see you guys in a few. Okay, so now that my ornament has dried, I'm going to now apply the glitter and epoxy. Um, I do take a piece of cardboard and I cut it so it fits inside my UV lamp and then I add a piece of double-sided tape to it and I just stick whatever acrylic piece I'm working with on there just so it holds it in place as I'm spreading the, um, or the UV resin and the glitter, okay? I just take a cap from like those little snack cups and I pretty much just apply about, for this for this size, it's a three inch circle. I apply about maybe a quarter of UV and I'm going to be using Opal Glitz by Yaya's Glitter. And you don't need much. You need very little glitter. The whole reason you, um, the whole reason behind using spray paint, and for those who make tumblers, you'll understand, but for those who only make keychains and badge wheels, when you add the base coat 
that matches as close to the glitter you're going to be working with when you apply your glitter it gives it the illusion that it's completely full of glitter which helps save on glitter and who doesn't want to save on their glitter right so pretty much you just mix it I mean, i'm sorry you mix it and you want to get kind of like a soupy consistency okay and now you're just going to apply and spread it around I only do two coats of UV resin and then I am done spread it all around nice and thin UV resin for the most part most brands are self leveling so you don't have to worry about it going over the edge like I'm literally bringing it over the edge Spreading it all on there. Doesn't take much. You always want to start off with a little. You don't want to start off with too much. So dot, dot, not a lot. You can always add. It's harder to subtract. Okay. Even when you get to the hole, just push it but don't, don't add too much. Just bring it around and it'll self-level. Okay. Now you're probably wondering about the back. Yes, it is flat white, but if you want to have glitter on the back, you do the same thing. You're gonna spray paint the back and then you're going to do the same process. So it, it is a little bit more work. I don't do double sides unless it's requested by a customer. Okay. And just kind of find some empty spots. And take your torch so now you can see it looks completely full of glitter. I have a little chunky piece of glitter right there, but I'm gonna leave it. Okay, you just take your torch, pop your bubbles. Do not stay in one spot. Okay. And you're gonna throw it in there. I do it for 180 seconds. And this is what it looks like when it's done. Okay, you may see a couple of little waves don't worry about it. It's gonna uh, when you do your second coat of um, UV resin, it's going to uh, fill it in and it'll be nice and smooth. But it looks like it's completely full of glitter. Okay, it's completely smooth. There's no roughness. You don't have to sand anything. The only time I feel like I ever have to sand is if I'm using cheap glitter. That's why it's important to use polyester glitter when you're working with the UV lamp. Um, just like when nail techs, they use polyester glitter because it will naturally lay itself in the UV glitter once it goes in the UV lamp. Okay, so now that I have this done, I've already weeded out my jack face. And you're just going to apply wherever you want his face to be. As so. I'm using a um, matte vinyl. You can use matte, doesn't matter, because when you add that UV resin, it's gonna, glo it's gonna make it look glossy. Okay. Just like so. Not worried about the bubbles because you usually you don't see them when you apply your second coat. That's how it's looking right now. Looks a little matte. And then, I'm just gonna clean my, my silicone brush here. Oops. Okay, and I'm gonna apply the UV resin. I start off with about 
a nickel size of UV resin. You always want to start off with a little bit. A little bit goes a long way and you just spread it around. All around. This part can be a little time consuming. Hold on, I need to grab another one of these. Yeah, on this side. Sorry, I'm not organized here. I'll just keep adding little bits at a time. That was probably like another another nickel size. And you're just spreading it, spreading it, spreading it. Now, because you are adding a good amount of UV resin, it is gonna take a couple of times to cure under the UV lamp. Probably anywhere from four to six minutes. But hey, four to six minutes versus 24 hours, I'll take it. And you're just gonna spread it. If you start to see waves, that means you don't have enough. You do not have enough and you bring it all the way to the edge. One thing I forgot to touch base on is when you do your first cure on your UV resin, sometimes it will pull in and you'll get like, it'll almost look like a dry, a dry, a dry ring all the way around. Completely okay because when you do your second coat, like what I'm working on right now, it covers it up. It fills it in. See just a little bit of a wave here by the nose and you just, I don't know if I can show you how much I add just to fill it in. See how it's looking wavy right now? Just a dot, just a dot. And you just kind of push it around a little bit. Okay, fill it in. Then I'm gonna take my torch light I'm going to pop some bubbles. That one by that eye is going to bug me. Maybe a piece of lint. I'm just going to add, see, a couple of unevenness. Just little dots. When you have waves, it's because you don't have enough UV resin. Again, just gonna these do take a little bit of time and I am somewhat of a perfectionist, so sorry. Let's see. Make sure I have not had one of these pop off. Um the only time I ever had one pop off, and that was because it was my like one of my first keychains, and I um, didn't do an inset, and I put vinyl all the way to the edge, and when I put my UV and it cured, the, the UV resin had nothing to grasp onto, and that's why it popped off. But that's just my personal experience. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find something to grab this little piece. Where's my weaving tool? Where is my reading tool? Sorry guys. Give me one second. Mm. Here it is. Nope, that's not it. Oh my goodness, where is my reading tool? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's gonna bother me, okay. Focus, focus, okay. I'm going to, I have to see a dry spot here. Oops. Just gonna add a little bit of UV resin. And I see one here. When you move it around, you'll see the waves or you'll see dry spots. So it's really important that you move your acrylic piece around when you're working with your UV resin. That right there. 
right there is bothering me. It's like these little two air bubbles. And I'm just torching it up a little bit, getting rid of some of those pesky bubbles. I need my pen. I'm going to have to use this weeding tool. I see a piece of glitter right where his eye is, so I want to grab that. Just push it over. Okay. No waves. Completely flat. Glass-like finish, okay? I'm gonna let this sit for about a minute before I put in the UV lamp and then I'll pop any remaining bubbles when it's sitting. And I'm going to work on the Sally face. I already started the Sally face earlier. So I'm just going to work on that one really quick as that one sits. I keep the brown piece that's that comes with the acrylic on the back still. And I have my her face already weeded out. So I'm just going to work on that while that one's setting. Too much stuff on my workspace and it's driving me crazy. Okay, just kind of line her up. Okay. Oops. Now I see bumps, and this is why I don't like to work with cheap glitter, Storecraft glitter, because it doesn't settle like polyester settles when you work with UV resin. I do see a bubble here, so let me show you what I do. I can't show you because I can't find my weeding tool. Um, okay. I'm gonna bust out my new one. My goodness. Okay. Taking out my new weeding tool. So there's a bubble there, okay? I literally will just poke a light hole and push that air out, it's gone, okay? You're gonna see little bumps here, but you won't see them when you apply the UV resin to it. That's why I don't like to use store glitter too much because I didn't have any of those bumps on the polyester one, which is the Jack one. Okay, so before I finish this, it's settled and I'm gonna move it around and find any bubbles that I may possibly have and I'm just gonna torch them. any usually rise when it sets any little air bubbles and it looks pretty good i'll show you before i put it in the uv resin glass like finish and let's pop it in i'm gonna do that probably 180 seconds but i'm gonna do that like four times that way it's nice and cured just because there is a lot of uv resin on there we can work on her while he's curing I will list all the material that I use in the description box below. And just please keep in mind, any product that I mention and or use during my tutorials, I am not a paid affiliate. This is all just personal product that I like to use when I am creating my tumblers or keychains or badge wheels. Mm, I like it right there. Okay, and I have a transparent red glitter. I want to give her lips a little pop of shimmer. And there we go. Oops. There we go. Okay, so that's what she looks like before the UV resin. See those bubbles there? You won't see them when we apply the resin. But 
this is not laying flat. Okay. Can you see the pull on this one? No, you can't. Okay. So he's still going. He's still cooking in there. Only I'm applying, I'm gonna apply about a quarter size. And then I'm just gonna spread it around. I did use a matte black vinyl, but it doesn't matter because it's gonna shine up and gloss up when you add the UV resin. And I'm just spreading it around. My shades are closed, so there's no UV, natural UV light coming through. <clears throat> and it is self-leveling. You don't have to worry about it spilling over. If it's spilling over, that means you have too much UV resin on your acrylic piece. That's why it's important that you start with a little dot, dot, not a lot. It's my saying. Can always add it's harder to subtract okay I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you don't have enough UV resin hopefully you guys can see it that way you get an idea of what to look out for so right now it's a very thin coat do you see all of that wave that means you do not have enough I don't know if you can see let me see that spot right there, it's like a dimple. That's dry right there. That means you don't have enough. You don't want this wave. Okay, so let's add some more. I'm trying to make this tutorial as short as possible, but it's really hard because this stuff is time consuming. I'm just putting little dots um, where there's a lot of wave to fill in those waves. And then I'll spread it in. The dots that I'm putting, just little tiny dots. And you just want to mix it all in and start evening it out. It, um, my UV lamp went off, so I'm curing him again. And you just start to move it. Move. It's important that you move your acrylic piece around because then you'll see the waves, and then wherever there's a wave is where you add just a little bit of UV resin. Start to fill in those waves. Okay. Also, if you start to, if you have like a pesky bubble that will not budge, and it happens to be at the edge of a vinyl piece, or anywhere where you have like Pretty much it's usually towards the edge of a vinyl, any um, edging of vinyl work. If there's a bubble that keeps popping up, even though you remove it or you pop it and it keeps popping, that means you have air trapped and you didn't rub your vinyl in. So you wanna make sure that you do a really good rub down on your vinyl that helps eliminate any of those bubbles that just won't won't budge and I think sometimes what I like to do is just heat up my UV resin just a little bit just go over it pop any little pesky bubbles and it also helps smooth out your vinyl so I see right here I just need to add a little bit I see a little dimple just a dot you know, kind of naturally fill in. I think we're looking good. Okay, so right now I'm happy with the way this is looking. No dimples, no waves. Okay, kind of looks like it, but I'm telling you, from my point of view, nothing. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, 
go over it with my torch one more time. I'm going to let it sit. And now he is done. There you go. Glass like finish. Ta da! Yay! And then I'll go ahead and add the bows and stuff like that, but I'll show that in a few minutes. And he's all done. Okay? But I am going to let him cure a few more times just because we do apply a lot of UV resin. And while that's going, let me go ahead and get set up on how I make my bows, and I will be right back. Okay, now for the bow part of the ornament and for the ornament to hang, we need to make the um, piece that it's gonna hang from. And I'm just using ribbon, and I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna give Sally a bow, and I'm just gonna keep Jack simple. I'm not gonna add a bow, but you can if you want to. So pretty much I measured this out at 14 inches long, okay? And you're just pretty much going to make a ribbon shaped, a ribbon shape, I guess, so to speak, okay? I've already needled, I've already threaded my needle and I did a double knot, okay? And you just create a ribbon like shape. You're gonna bring the middle in and create like a bow. Just wanna make sure that this side is even with this side. And it's gonna be a little hard to show. I pretty much just th thread, poke a hole right here, and you're gonna go in and out. You're gonna go forward, okay? Oops, forward, and then you're gonna go back in. That makes sense. I'm not really good at the sewing term, sorry guys. And then you're gonna bring it forward again, or you're gonna push it back, sorry. So you're gonna go like back in, back in. You're like weaving it in and out, I guess. And then once you get to the top, pull it forward, and it's gonna bunch it up naturally, okay? I wrap it a few times. Sorry, I know this part's a little bit fast. But like I said, I don't want to keep this tutorial too long. And I just kind of pull just to give it some tightness. Okay. And then I take this portion of the ribbon and this right here. And I just kind of weave it through. Not weave it through. I'm sorry. I poke it through. It's a little bit thick. So I need a little assistance. Boop. Just like that. And then... There's a loop, oops, I pulled too much. It's gonna create a loop. And I just kinda, sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't in the camera. And I just kinda weave it through that loop. And pull it through. And that's it, cut it. And I just like to make sure, I just kinda bring these two back just to make sure that they're even. Okay. And I grab the two ends here. I want these to be even. And I just cut at a diagonal. There's lots of tutorials on how to sew your own bows. I do hand sew. I do make these exact bows and this is what I use for my tumblers. This exact method. And I'm happy with that. Okay, now for the middle part, I just grab, I don't even know what size this is. Let me see what size this is. Um, sorry, I'm looking. It is, I think it's a quarter inch. No, it's three eighths of an inch way off. Three eighths of an inch. And then, please excuse my ugly glue gun. It is on its last leg. I need to get a new one. If anybody has any recommendations on a good glue gun, like a really good one, please let me know in the comments below because I am in desperate need of one. I'm sorry, I do like to burn. You will need a lighter, sorry guys. I just burn the edge. 
and I put it in the middle and I'm going to wrap it around. Oops, jumping ahead guys. Clean this up, burn the little edges a little bit. Again, I'm sorry if I am moving fast, I know I am. And so once you glue this middle piece in, you just wrap it around. Okay. And I just give it a little tug just so it's nice and nice and tight. Add another dot. I just make a circle. I just do that circle motion a few times just so I don't have all that hot glue gun webbing. Try to eliminate it as much as possible. And I just press down on it. This extra material, I just cut as close as I possibly can to the edge. Then I take my lighter and quickly just give it a seal. You do, I also forgot, you do need to burn the edges here so you don't get any frays. Just really quick. Nice even seal. You don't want to go too much. I will show you what happens if you go too much on that lighter. See how it's like, if you just go, it'll just start to burn. You don't want that. So you just got to go really quick. Okay. So now that she's bows done, I have, this is the part that you're going to use to hang your ornament on. And the size of this one is, I don't know because it's covered. Let me see. One eighth of an inch. Okay, and she, she's done. Okay. So she's all done. Sorry, I'm sticky over here. And he's all done too, okay? Both done. Let me just go ahead and take care of him because he's quicker. So pretty much I'm just going to loop it through. First we got to take the packing off. Sorry about that. Just grab my weeding tool. Okay. This is what the back looks like. You can personalize this. 2019, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, you could put a Nightmare Before Christmas quote on there, a kid's name. So that's pretty much what it looks like. You can double side this. If you're going to double side it, you're going to want to spray paint this before you apply all this. Spray paint this side and then you'll go ahead and add your glitter and do the same process. Okay. So I'm just going to feed it through. I just lay the material down and I take my needle, not the point, but where the eye is. And I just kind of push it through. To get that. Oops, I didn't push it enough through. One more time. I just it just feeds it through just so I can grasp it. Okay. The length is entirely up to you on how long you want it to hang. I think I measured this at eight inches, so it would hang be four inches long. I think it's a little too long now that I'm looking at it, so I am going to shorten it just a little bit. Oops. Now what I'm going to do, please be careful when you're working with a hot gun, but I'm used to the heat, so I'm just going to apply a little bit. And combine the two together. Press it down. Then I'm going to bring it, this the part that we just glued together, I'm going to bring it back. You don't have to do this. It's just something that I like to do. And then I take, let me clean it up first, sorry. I'm just going to burn it just a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to take a little bit, just a little bit of glue, hot glue a smidge, a little dot, and 
You don't have to do this. It's just something that I like to do. Got a little bit of glue. Oh, of course. Okay. You can sometimes throw a heat to it just a little bit just to melt that glue in. And there you have your first ornament. Okay. Oops. Like so. I didn't want to add a bow to him just because, you know, he's a boy. And I just wanted to keep him simple because Sally's going to be more dressed up. I should have made her bow a little bit smaller. I should have went with the smaller one. This is way too big. But I'm just going to go with it. Oh, no. Do I want to make it smaller? Uh, I don't know what to do. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I made this one a little too big. Yeah, I'm not liking that. Let me go ahead and fix that and I'll be right back. Okay, so... I decided to go with the smaller bow. I made it the same way I showed earlier. I'm just gonna feed this through now. Oh, where's my needle? Oops. Need some more. I just pretty much lay it across and I get the eye of the needle portion of it, of the needle, and I just feed it through. Pull it through. Okay. I'll line it up. I remember I cut the jack one a little bit, so I am going to cut this one a little bit too. Okay. Gonna add a little bit. Just a... Line it up. Just press it. Okay. And then, oops, I forgot to take the. <laughs> forgot to take it off the paper back of it. Sorry about that. And the same thing applies. I'm just going to add just a little bit, just a little bit. Hot glue. Don't have to do this. This is just something I like to do. I just feel like it makes it look cleaner and it'll keep it from, I guess, swiveling around. Okay, and then to attach the bow, I literally just hot glue it to the ribbon portion of it. Like so. your Sally bow or your Sally ornament. Let me show you the jack one. Okay. And this, there you go. Awesome guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Happy crafting.